Well, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Jonathan. Thank you for uh, uh, keeping uh, that introduction really brief. So I'm uh, using technology here that somehow skipped to page 16. We'll tap it right back to the beginning. There we are. Uh, and thanks for keeping the introduction brief and, and short. I told them uh, any longer than that and we start to blush. Um, it really is uh, a delight and an honor to be here today uh, on the first day of Climate Week in New York City. And I bring greetings on behalf of our Premier Kathleen Wynne and the Ontario government. It's inspiring to see and to feel the energy of everyone here uh, and it's really nice to be in a room with people who share a passion for fighting climate change uh, and, and who envision a cleaner, more prosperous, net zero future. So I welcome the opportunity to speak to you about the work we're doing in our province, our province of Ontario, uh, to fight climate change and specifically how our climate action plan aims to dramatically reduce greenhouse gas pollution from buildings. A few weeks ago, Ontario announced as a key pillar of that plan a new provincial agency to help homeowners and businesses save money and fight climate change. I'll get to those details shortly. First, I wanted to spend a few minutes to recognize the, the natural catastrophes uh, wrought by hurricanes in recent weeks. Um, and while we are here advancing a collective commitment to fighting climate change, we know that millions of people in the southern United States and the uh, Caribbean are dealing with the aftermath of, of these vicious, record-breaking storms. Uh, and I learned uh, just a couple of hours ago that uh, the latest hurricane uh, to blow into the Caribbean is now a Category 3 storm and expected to grow stronger. Uh, it's truly heartbreaking. And it makes the work we're all doing that much more meaningful and important. And I can tell you, in, in my neck of the woods, I was in uh, about 200 uh, uh, miles north of Toronto, five days after I was sworn in as the Minister of Environment, and a thousand meters from uh, my little cabin in the woods, we had an F3 tornado blow through, uh, little damage to some cabins in the area, many, many, many trees knocked down. Uh, but the old timers have told me, this just doesn't happen in our neck of the woods. Well, clearly it does, and it's happening more and more. Um, the irony of Mother Nature almost taking out the newly minted Minister of Environment and Climate Change uh, was not missed on me, I'll tell you. <laughs> it reminds me, uh, all of what's going on though, reminds me of a, a recent statement by a climate scientist from a Texas Tech University. If climate were changing this rapidly thousands of years ago, we'd simply pick up our tents and move. Today, we can't pick up our cities and move them. So this is the crux of the issue, I think. We live, we work, we thrive in complex, stationary societies centered around what is uh, centered around the built environment and buildings that are both vulnerable to the effects of climate change and contribute to it. In fact, roughly one quarter of Ontario's climate change causing emissions come from buildings. As our population and economy grow, so too are the number of buildings being built and the greenhouse gas pollution they generate. The Toronto region is projected to grow by at least 100,000 people each year. Some think it's more like 120 to 140,000 people each year. It has currently 172 high-rise buildings under construction with another 434 planned to be built. With this growth comes, obviously, more pollution, but it also brings the opportunity to do things differently. Which is why we are taking strong action now, building on some significant progress. When I think about what a net zero community looks like and how it functions, I really get excited about our future. But I also get frustrated because much of the technology to go net zero has been around for decades. There was a story in, uh, in, in our newspaper uh, the other day about a home builder living more or less off-grid, right in the, the center of Toronto. He's been doing that uh, for the last 20 years. Uh, he, uh, he has this house, 
that was uh, the winner of a competition uh, back in the 90s, and he's raised his family there. In fact, it's a duplex. Two families have been raised there. They import a little bit of electricity into this house. So we've known how to do this for many years. In my mind, it's, it's not a necessarily a technology problem we face. It's a social change problem we face. Many governments, particularly at the local and subnational level, are leading this fight, however. As a bit of a history buff, uh, the work of subnationals reminds me uh, a bit, anyway, of the rise of the, the powerful Italian city-states uh, many uh, years ago, uh, before the Renaissance, uh, but in still, instead of building towards a Renaissance of arts and philosophy and science, today the Renaissance is building towards a low-carbon future. Along with government, activists, businesses, indigenous and community groups, we're driven by the shared purpose to create a better life, to make our planet a better place to fight climate change. It starts with our homes and our businesses, our workplaces, our schools, our institutions, and essentially transforming how we live, work, and study in those buildings. It means building efficient buildings that use less energy and use energy that is renewable, building materials that are sustainable, and in the end, producing zero waste. It's efficient, cost-effective, resilient, and generates no emissions. It also means buildings are, uh, it also means buildings are that uh, are more comfortable to live and work in. It sort of sounds impossible, but through innovation, determination, and a collective will to take decisive action, we are making progress, and we're making progress together. That drive, purpose, challenge, and opportunity provides the foundation for our province's climate change action plan. Our carbon market, putting a hard cap on the pollution businesses can emit, funds our efforts to stimulate low carbon choices through our climate change action plan. The 90 plus initiatives in our action plan, many which are focused on the building sector, are aimed at helping ensure Ontario residents uh, and Ontario meet its short and long term greenhouse uh, pollution reduction targets. The action plan builds off improvements to buildings from conservation programs, product efficiency regulations, greening the electrical system, and from having one of the most efficient building codes in North America. Right now, uh, Ontario's Ministry of Municipal Affairs is holding consultations on our building code uh, that will further reduce GHG emissions and put Ontario on a pathway to net zero buildings. To prepare for the growing need for green building skills, the action plan establishes low carbon jobs and training partnerships with post-secondary institutions and indigenous communities. I know there is a lot of work to do. I looked into, uh, personally, I, I looked into uh, digging a big hole in my side yard so I could put in a, uh, a reservoir to collect rainwater to flush toilets with and, and, uh, and water the garden. Uh, but when I looked at the hurdles that I would have to uh, jump through as a homeowner, it just wasn't worth it. So we have work to do. I live in a subdivision that, that has these sorts of restrictions uh, that make these sorts of simple things virtually impossible. We'll have to look at how to change that. You know, Ontario launched uh, a carbon market this past January to help reduce greenhouse gas pollutions and fund climate actions. Uh, we've held three successful auctions, generating about $1.5 billion in proceeds. Uh, we have two auctions left to go in this fiscal year. Every dollar uh, is invested in climate change, the, the Climate Change Action Plan. Uh, it, every dollar is aimed at reducing or preventing greenhouse gas pollution. Over four years, we expect to invest $6 billion worth of carbon market proceeds into climate action, about a quarter of that specifically to reduce GHGs from buildings. One of the cornerstones of our climate action plan is the new provincial agency, the Green Ontario Fund. Let me tell you about the fund. It, it, the Green Ontario Fund has a, has a formidable mandate 
of helping residents and businesses in every community across our province reduce greenhouse gas pollution in their home, their office, their stores, their warehouses, their factories, all while saving money through lower energy bills. The Green Ontario Fund, or Green On as we call it, is tasked with making it easier for Ontario residences and businesses to switch out of old energy uh, inefficient furnaces in their homes or install new low carbon technology in the office or at a manufacturing plant. We are investing up to $377 million from the carbon market this year to establish a Green Ontario Fund and up to $2.4 billion over the next several years to help the agency fulfill its mandate. The first program out of the gate uh, is Green On Installations, a program that will provide Ontario homeowners with a no-cost smart thermostat and a complimentary installation, as well as a home energy review to provide personalized suggestions to help save money and fight climate change. And it was well received. That's just the beginning. The Green Ontario Fund will be rolling out a wide range of programs for residents, industries, and small and medium-sized businesses. It really is uh, an exciting time to be fighting climate change in Ontario. We're also investing uh, carbon market proceeds in other climate fighting actions. The list literally is as long as my arm, but I have a few highlights here. We're investing in improving uh, social housing retrofitting homes, uh, supporting clean growth in First Nation communities. Uh, we're helping municipalities with GHD reduction projects, uh, improving energy efficiency uh, throughout our public school system, supporting businesses adopt low carbon technologies. We're funding low carbon innovations and we're building many, many, many electrical vehicle charging stations. And as I said, the list continues. All of these significant investments demonstrate how our carbon market and our climate change action plan are working together to achieve deep greenhouse gas pollution reductions. So I want to thank the organizers again for giving me the opportunity to tell you a little bit about uh, Ontario's action to reduce the carbon footprint uh, of our buildings. Our, our efforts are part of an incredible transformation uh, happening everywhere. A transformation that is fighting climate change, creating a, a global low carbon economy and ensuring a healthier and more prosperous future for our families, our community and our world. Thank you very much for allowing me this opportunity.